if there is a natural inclination to life, unless interfered with, forests will find the full potentials of the beings of the forest, unless interfered with. Human beings are the biggest interference. Is there some interference within us that made us go in a way that we are narrowing our own definition of ourselves down to a point where we are not even aware that there is something called a greater potential? See, one reason is uh, the route that modern science has taken. Modern science has taken that route largely in reaction to very dogmatic religions under which, under, under the umbrella of which the modern science evolved, particularly in Europe. That's where the whole Renaissance system happened. If you look at science, it's horribly reactive and already made conclusions. A scientist should be inquisitive. He should be in wonderment, not in suspicion. But he's in suspicion because the whole attitude of science has become like this because it is in reaction to dogmatic religions which try to enforce their own whatever rubbish on the science in its early stages. Science is like a juvenile who is reacting to something that was imposed upon him as a child. Still, science is in that stage. Slowly it's growing out of it, but largely in that stage. Anything, first dismiss it. No, a scientist should be interested in everything, isn't it? A true scientist should be interested in everything. If somebody says, I walked in the temple, tears are coming, please experiment, what is happening here? No, he first dismisses it as rubbish. No, he must experiment in whatever way possible, isn't it? No, he just dismisses it because he comes from that background where dogmatic religions enforced and tried to stop the development of science in so many different ways. So largely that religious belief, which comes from certain areas of the world, which is so strong and believes in silly things as if they're the most profound things, okay? So these silly things have been imposed upon people for centuries and when science reacted to that, it looked like a great uh, revolution. It's called renaissance, it's a revolution. But that kind of investigation, wanting to look at everything, is not new to us here. The whole spiritual process has always been about looking at everything with fresh eyes. We don't even trust the two eyes. We want to open an extra eye and look at it, okay? <laughs> because we know very easily you can be... your senses can be contaminated with memory. Your eyes are deeply contaminated with your own memory. Because depending upon the type of memory you have, accordingly what you see looks beautiful, ugly, okay, not okay, good, bad, everything, because it is loaded with memory. So a thoughtless eye is what we want to develop. The whole system of yoga is... the pinnacle of yoga is shown as a third eye, because third eye is a thoughtless eye. Today, that's why I said you must ask the question without your intellect, use your intelligence. But without the filter of your intellect, ask a question, then you'll come up with crazy questions. Without using the filter of your intellect, if you just find expression to your logic, crazy things will happen. Crazy means socially crazy, but they're very life-oriented stuff. And that's how you fall in love, that's how moments of genius and creativity happens to a human being when you do not use the filter of your intellect. I'm saying, why don't you live like that every moment of your life? Why is the spark of life and genius only here and there? It must be every moment you must be sparking if you want to fire and go somewhere, right? You know, within a... Uh, at least in the older engines, there's a sparking plug, okay? It has to spark all the time. If it doesn't spark, off and on it sparks, that's a lousy machine, that's a lousy human being too, who doesn't spark all the time, who sparks one sin away.